guess what? I got a fever. And the only prescription is more Baofeng. Studies have shown that there are more Baofeng UV5Rs in use in the world today than any other radio, all other radios combined. And this is because, as any licensed ham radio operator will tell you, the Baofeng UV5R is the best engineered, best radio you can buy. And so because these radios are so popular, and because so many of the owners of these radios are too lazy to read the manual or go online and look up what the menu options mean, I'm gonna go over the most important options for the UV 5R and show you how to change them. I'm gonna point out the options that if you're gonna change anything, you really need to change these nine options or at least be aware of what they are. As with every one of my videos that I have ever posted, I won't waste your time with a stupid intro and fancy graphics and music. I won't beg for you to subscribe or join like so many other YouTubers do, wasting your time. I know that your time is just too valuable and too important to ever waste like that. So I have my UV5R and you'll notice that there is no antenna connected. You don't need to leave a comment pointing out that there's no antenna connected. I know because I took it off. I take the antenna off so that I don't poke my eye out while I'm recording and so it doesn't hit the overhead camera. But I also take it off because I don't have a ham radio operator's license. And without a ham radio operator's license, if I were to press this button with an antenna connected, I would be in violation of the law. And I don't want to make any ham radio operators sad by doing that. Now I know that pressing the transmit button, which I may do from time to time as I'm going through this video, without an antenna attached, can damage the radio. Do not do this at home. But if I press the transmit button while there's no antenna attached, it will be momentarily only, and I'm willing to take that risk for you, my favorite viewer. Now, one other thing about the UV5R, I do want to thank the sad ham that just left a comment on one of my last videos pointing out how dangerous, so were his words, that was his word that he used in the comment, how dangerous it can be to transmit on a UV5R without first checking the UV5R on your RF spectrum analyzer for spurious RF emissions. So I looked it up. Thousands of children are killed every year from irresponsible parents not taking the time to check for spurious RF output using their spectrum analyzer. So let's all take a lesson from that ham radio, licensed ham radio operator that took the time to give us that warning about how dangerous using UV5R can be. All right, enough making fun of morons that leave comments on my videos. So let's go over the important settings that you should know about and will probably want to change before using your UV5R. So the first option that you're going to want to change or at least be aware of is the squelch option. The squelch on these radios, these are great little radios. But for 25 bucks, they're not perfect. And the squelch on these radios kind of sucks. And by that, I mean it's either on or off. So if you have the squelch set too low, you're going to hear nothing but static. And if you have it set too high, you may not hear anybody talking at all. I usually set mine around five. That way I know that it's not going to be too high or too low. And there's very little difference between too low and too high. It's almost an on or off. So to get to the squelch, we're going to go into the menu, and in the menu now I can scroll up and down using the arrow key to different menu options. The squelch menu is the default, the first one that comes up. So it's already selected. I'm going to hit menu again. Whoop, I waited too long. I'm going to hit menu again, and that's going to let me change the value, which is on the lower line here. So I can just use the up and down arrow key. I'll set it at five and hit menu again. Confirm. 
and now it's saved. So now if I use the exit key to go out of the menu, if I go back, I can see that squelch is set at five. That's right in the middle. So basically you wanna make sure the squelch is not set to zero or to nine, because that might be too high or too low. Now the next option is the transmitting power, the default transmit power. Now there's not a huge amount of difference between the high and the low setting on these radios. I usually set mine at low because that's gonna make the battery last longer. There's only like a one or two watt difference depending on what frequency you're transmitting on. And honestly, it really doesn't make a huge amount of difference in distance. So if you're just talking to somebody within a mile of you, low or high isn't gonna make any difference as far as distance, but it will make a difference on how hard it sucks down on your battery. So to set the default power level setting, menu. I'm gonna to go to menu and I'm gonna to go to menu option two. Now I can could just use the up and down arrow key or when I'm in menu, I can just hit number two. And mine is currently set to high, is gonna be the default power level. I'm gonna change that. Power. So I hit menu, and now I just use the up or down arrow key to low, and I hit menu to confirm it. And now you'll see the little L up there at the top of the screen indicating that it's on low power. Now that is the default power setting for any new channel or any new frequency that you go to. You can change the default for any channel or frequency. You see here that it's on low right now. You see the tiny L there. By tapping on the pound key, you can change it to high. Now that L is gone, and on the UV5R, when there's nothing there, that means high. If you have a BF F8HP, which is the eight watt version, you'll see a L for low, M for medium, H for high. The next menu option is the battery save menu option, which is option number three. Now on the screen, it just says save, which doesn't mean much, but if you were to take the time to look it up and read it in the manual, you'd see that menu option number three is battery saver. And I always turn that off because what the battery saver does is it sets how frequently the radio is listening for new transmissions. The lower the battery saving setting, the more often it's checking, listening. The higher that battery save setting is, the less frequent it's checking to see if there's any transmission. So what that means is when your friend starts talking, if the battery save level is set too high, you may not hear the first word or two that he says because the radio wasn't listening. So it'll sound like he started talking before he pressed the button. So by turning the battery saver off, you will always hear everything that he says. And in my experience in using my UV5R, my half a dozen UV5Rs over the last few years, it's never made a difference in actually how long the battery lasts or it's made no difference that I was able to see without measuring with scientific instruments. They still lasted all day long. I didn't see any difference. So to turn the battery save off, we're gonna go to menu. It's already on menu item three, but if it wasn't, I would just use the up and down arrow button, hit menu again to select that menu option and Go to off, menu again to confirm. The next option that we're gonna turn off is TDR or dual watch. And I hate this feature. The UV5R allows you to listen to and transmit on two frequencies at once. It's like having two radios. So here you can see that the upper frequency is set to 444, 445. The lower one is set to 462, 600. So I can be listening. I am now listening to both of these frequencies at the same time, but I'm only gonna talk on the one that has the little carrot down here, the little icon. And the issue that I always have, I'll hear somebody talking on one of the two frequencies and I'll pick up the radio and get excited because they're talking to me and I'll start talking back to them, but I haven't selected the right frequency. So they don't hear me or somebody else hears me on the other frequency and they don't know what I'm talking about. It gets too confusing to listen to and talk on two frequencies at once. It's like holding two radios in your hand. It gets very confusing. So if you are like me and are a simpleton, you can turn this feature off and I always do. So to turn off the dual watch or TDR, I'm gonna hit menu and either use the up and down arrow buttons until I find it or because I know it's option seven, just hit seven. Now I'm at the TDR option. It's currently set to on. I hit menu to go down to that line to change it. 
arrow up until it's off. Menu to confirm, it is now off. Now, even though I still see the two different frequencies on the screen, I use the AB button to control. Now I'm only listening to the upper frequency and only transmitting on the upper frequency. Or if I switch to the lower frequency, now I'm only listening to and transmitting on the one frequency. Keeping it simple for us simpletons. The next one that you should at least know about, you may or may not want to turn it off, it's a personal preference, is the beep. Every time I hit a menu option, it beeps, and you may want to turn that beep off. So to do that, we go to menu, we go to menu option number eight, beep, hit menu again, and use the up and down arrow key to set it to off. Menu again to confirm. Now, every time I hit a button, it's silent. I like it on, a lot of people like it off. So if you want it on or off, now you know it's one of those ones that you can go in and change. Another one of those personal preference ones is the voice prompts. Notice how every time I hit a button, you can hear the Baofeng lady talking to you. You may get enough sass back from other females in your life already. You don't need more from your stupid radio. So to turn the voice prompting off, go to menu, menu. scroll up and down through the options until we find voice prompt. Notice now it doesn't beep, it's silent because I turned that off. And here is the voice setting. It's currently set to English. Voice prompt. I can change it to Chinese. Or English. Confirm. Voice prompt. Or if you don't want that sass back from her, turn it off. The next item that we want to change, especially if you're going to give your radio to your stupid friends to use, is BCL, Busy Channel Lockout, menu option number 23. What Busy Channel Lockout does is if I key up the radio to start talking, but somebody else is already transmitting, Busy Channel Lockout will lock me out from transmitting because that frequency is already busy. So it will prevent me from talking over somebody that's already talking. So for busy channel lockout, I'm gonna go to menu. We're gonna to go to option number 23, BCL, busy channel lock off. Hit menu again to select it. Use the up or down arrow key to select on and menu again. And now it's saved. Now you notice I didn't get the confirm sass back from her. She's not talking anymore because we told her to shut her up with that previous setting. The next option is the alarm option. As you know, the UV5R being the best engineered radio in the world, according to ham radio operators worldwide, it has an alarm call button. So if you were to press and hold the call button, it makes that wonderful little alarm noise. By default, if you do that, it will transmit that alarm noise over the air. So what most people will do is set it so that if you press and hold that button accidentally, it's only going to sound through the speaker. It will never transmit that stupid alarm noise. That's menu option 32. So we're going to go into menu. Go up to number 32. or we'll just type in 32. Alarm mode. Right now it's set to tone. And we're going to make sure that it's set to sight. So setting alarm mode to sight will mean it, it, you only hear it on the, the site, on the radio through the speaker. And now for the most important feature that you want to be absolutely certain you turn on. That is menu option number 39. And that is the Roger Beep. The Roger Beep is that little sound you hear when, you, when you're transmitting and then you let go. It makes a little beep. You want to make sure you turn that on because the ham radio operators love to hear other people use that beep sound. It lets the ham radio operators know that you're serious about using your Baofeng UV5R. So to turn that on, we go to menu. It was menu option 39. 39. And I hit menu and just make sure that it's set to on. It was already on. Make sure it's set to on. Now when I key up and transmit, it makes that lovely little, makes that lovely little professional, serious 
Roger Beep. Now, some ham radio operators, it's a small minority, may complain that that Roger Beep is annoying. It's a uh, blah, 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 blah. When that happens, you just let them know that this is your radio and you use it the way you want and you don't care what they think. Unless you want something or you want their help, then you do what they say. Otherwise, if they don't like it, they can go listen to somebody else. And that's it. Those are the most important features that you should at least be aware of on your Baofeng UV5R. If you have any questions about any of those features, other features, anything that I've gone over here today, leave a comment below. Stupid comments, dickhead comments, sad ham comments explaining radio theory or answering questions that nobody asks and nobody cares about. Generally annoying comments will be pinned to the top for everybody to laugh at. So keep that in mind before you post a stupid comment. There's no such thing as stupid questions. If you have a question, ask it. I'll do my best to answer. If I'm not able to answer it, somebody else will try. They will probably get it wrong, so bear that in mind. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you on the trail.